Hey guys, in today's music tech quick tip video, I'm answering a question that I often get in my comment section, and that is, do I need a splitter for my in-ear monitor rack? And if so, which one should I get? The short answer is if you are running sound and you have to provide PA, so if you're playing at a venue or a bar or a restaurant or a wedding or something like that, and you are in charge of running the sound for front of house, and that mixer is also used for your in-ear monitors, that means that you don't need a splitter. If you are running sound for front of house, you do not need that splitter. However, if there is a different person who is going to be mixing front of house sound, then usually, yes, you do need a splitter. So all the instruments are going to plug into the splitter. So you plug in the vocals, the drums, the guitars, and all that stuff will go into the splitter. And then the splitter has two different outputs. It splits the signal. One goes directly to your in-ear monitor rack, and that is for you guys to mix your in-ear monitors to how you want them to sound. And the other one will go to front of house in order to be mixed, and they can mix front of house. The sound is gonna be different in front of house versus what's in your in-ear monitors. The levels will be different, the gain stage will be different, the EQ and stuff will be different. That's why everyone plugs into the splitter. One completely dry signal goes to your in-ear monitors, the other completely dry signal goes to front of house, and you guys mix accordingly. That's why you need a splitter. So the two basic options are you basically have a rack splitter, or a floor splitter. So a rack splitter is nice because it can live in your in-ear monitor rack and everything is already connected to the inputs. It takes less time to set up. However, it does take up more room in your rack. So if portability is something you're concerned about, it does take up a little bit more room. A floor split is nice because it's a lot more portable. It doesn't take up a bunch of room in your rack. However, that means you do have to set that up every single show. So you have to plug everything in on this floor splitter and then plug in your side into your mixer. It doesn't take that long, but it does take a little while. So it's up to you to decide which one is best for your setup. A floor split can be nice if you are like me and probably like 80% of the gigs that we do, we're in charge of providing PA and speaker and stuff like that. So for those gigs, we don't need a split. But for the 20% that we do, it is nice to have a floor split because then I don't need to bring that to every single gig, only the shows where I'm going to be splitting to front of house and I'm not in charge of running front of house sound then I can bring the floor split. But if I'm running sound, I don't even have to worry about it. However, I personally went with the Art S8 three-way, and I have a video going over my compact in your monitor rack setup, and I'll link to that up above and down below. The thing that's nice about this is I have two of them in my rack, so it only takes up two U of rack space, and we plug into one input, and then it splits the signal three different ways, but one of those outputs is right next to it. So if I was plugging in, you know, the kick drum, I would plug in here and that would go directly into our X32 mixer, which is the one that I use. And then right next to it is the direct out to go to front of house. So now that everything is in the mixer, now I just have to run all the cables to go out to front of house. Doesn't that take a minute? Well, it would, but I have one of these cables. So this has 8XLR on one side and 8XLR on the other side. So I have all of them labeled and I send that out to front of house to be mixed. It takes a minute to plug all those cables in, but it's just kick in, kick out to front of house. I will link to that down below. If you want more details on how I personally do that, I have a video on my compact in your monitor setup and I will link to that up above and down below. So those are your options and that answers the questions if you need one. Another common question that I get asked a lot is, well, can I just send them an output from something? Fill in the blank here. So they'll say, oh, well, I have six outputs from my mixer. Can I just send them the six outputs that way? So if you wanted to send them like the six outputs from your Behringer X32 or something like that, the answer to that is usually yes, if it is a dry signal. If the signal is dry, you don't want to be sending them a signal that is already gain staged, EQ'd, and compressed and stuff like that. You want the front of house guy to add the compression and the EQ and stuff like that. So as long as you can send them a dry signal, the answer is yes. Sending them a dry signal is definitely the best or with at least the least amount of processing as possible so they can set it up on their end. What about can I just send them a left and right to the front of house? And the answer for that is sometimes you can do that. I do that sometimes as well. Sometimes a place that I'm playing, they will have a PA system set up there, but they don't have a sound guy. So I'm in charge of running the sound. Sometimes it's just easier to send a left, right as well. Just make sure that you have asked them ahead of time and realize that means that you are in charge of running the front of house sound. I've also done this where I just plug in a left and right and then I give the sound guy access to our router. And the sound guy, you know, is used to mixing on an X32, and then he just mixes the front of house sound using the mixer. That's also an option as well. I've done that before. You do just want to make sure that, you know, the signal is really dialed in if you're sending them anything with like a mix or something like that. So I remember I went to one of my friend's show, just a local band around here, and they sent the front of house guy 
all the drums on one channel. I think it was actually a pair of channels. So it was a stereo mix of the drums. Sound guy had no separation of the kick, the snare, the overheads. All of it was just sent as one. The sound guy obviously didn't like that. It didn't really sound great, to be honest. I also did a show where I opened for that one guy. If you guys don't know him, he's actually really awesome, really cool musician, very unique. But he actually just sent left and right to the sound guy, and that's what he did for the whole tour. And I was talking to him about it, and he said that he spent like a month just in a, in a room with the sound guy, really getting everything just dialed in for his whole show so that he could just send a left and right to the sound guy at every show and didn't have to worry about splitting it. Sounded awesome, that was really dialed in. So if you are gonna do something like that, just make sure that it is very, very dialed in. My original project, I'm a live looper, so there isn't really a way for me to separate everything. I have to really go make sure that I have everything set up and mixed properly since I am basically sending them not everything separated because of the fact that I'm doing live looping and basically everything goes out together. It really just depends. Most of the time, the best option is to just send them a dry split. That's usually the best case. But I also know that I've done shows where it's like, man, I wish I would just send a left and right because, you know, they had our tracks too quiet or they had the backing vocals up too loud when it needed to be back a little further or stuff like that, you know, where you're in control of your own mix. Either way, just make sure you communicate with the sound guy if there is a sound guy. Most of the time they'll tell you, yeah, I don't want a left, right. I prefer to have control over the mix in the front or that they say, yeah, send me a left and right. That sounds good. And you can go from there. Just make sure that you communicate with the sound guy either way. So hopefully that made sense. It's not really a quick tip. This went a little bit longer than I thought it would. But if you guys made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. It does a ton to help out the YouTube algorithm and I would appreciate it. So two videos to check out. If you're interested in how I set up my split, be sure to check out my video on my compact in-ear monitor setup. And also I have switched over to the Audio Technica wireless in-ear monitor system. And I have a whole review on that. If you wanna check out both of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any more questions that you want answered in a video, please leave them in a comment down below. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram at Scott Yule Music. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.